Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In part one of this presentation, Dr. Michael Claridge, a scientist on the Sapphire Project team, proposed an entirely new way of seeing our solar system based on the principles of electrical engineering. In this episode, Dr. Claridge further elaborates the idea of the solar system as a center core electrical transformer and he will explain the results from initial experiments to actually build such a transformer. Now let us return to our image of the solar system as a collection of nested coils of wire. We will apply the very basic idea of the electrical transformer with different numbers of turns for different coils. Planets that go many times round will transform solar influences to higher voltages Planets that go fewer times around will transform solar influences into lower voltages. From a very simple analysis, looking at the relative times each planet orbits around the Sun, we get these numbers for the voltages transformed by each planet. The first column of numbers is the number of times each planet goes around the Sun in the time it takes Neptune to go around once. You will see the Earth coils around the Sun 165 times, Jupiter only 14 times. We are taking this as the relative number of times the wire wraps around the transformer core. The second column of numbers gives the relative voltages transformed by each planet. Those planets that have more turns should have higher electrical tensions. For the sake of argument, we will assign 250,000 volts to the Earth, as this is roughly the voltage difference on the Earth between the surface of the Earth and the ionosphere. Then, Jupiter, with its fewer number of turns around the Sun, should only be sustaining about 20,000 volts. You can take this as a prediction, but so far we only have measurements for Earth. Maybe when the Cassini probe dives into Saturn's atmosphere, we might get some measurement there. Now, of course, things in the solar system are much more complicated. As I've said before, the solar system is just as complex as the human body, so all of this is certainly a vast simplification. But it is in the right direction. It will get us thinking about things in the right way to make new understanding about all planetary systems. One of the main characteristics of electrical transformers is their oscillation. Most transformers only work with alternating current. It is the electromagnetic breathing in and breathing out of the primary coil that drives the breathing in and the breathing out of the secondary coil. Now here's a graph of the pulsations of the solar magnetic field. The larger cycle is the 22-year sunspot cycle. The smaller wiggles are the 27-day rotation period of the sun. And as you can see, there are smaller wiggles still on top of that. In alternating current electrical transformers, oscillations from the primary coil induce predictable oscillations in all the secondary coils. So if the Sun is sending out this known oscillatory pattern, then what is being induced in each of the planets? I was getting motivated to start experimenting with some of this, so I started building my solar system. Here are three planets represented by coils of wire. In the very center is my primary Sun coil, into which I will push a driving alternating current. The next coil out is about two inches across and it has magnet wire wrapped about 20 times around. The relative sizes of the rings obeys Bode's law where the diameter of the next orbit is roughly twice the diameter of the one inside. The number of turns of each wire in each planet coil uh, obeys Kepler's law. In other words, this little wire setup mimics Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus over about 240 years. Now, hook up an alternating current to the center Sun coil and measure what sort of signal is induced in the outer Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus coils. Here's a picture of the full setup. And here is the voltage trace of two of the planets. Now again, I'm driving the inner sun coil with an alternating current and then displaying the induced voltage oscillations inside the outer planet coils. This system 
had many strong resonances. Just me moving around the room would cause large changes in the voltages. And I was surprised when the voltage measured in each planet coil was roughly the same. The inner planet, with its much larger number of turns, I thought should have a much larger voltage because voltage is proportional to number of turns. So looking again at Faraday's law of induction, I was reminded that the induced voltage also involves the total magnetic flux through the area in question. The size of the voltage step up or step down also depends upon the size of the orbit. And it is interesting that the area of the planet's orbit increases in a way that the decreasing number of turns just about cancels out. Kepler's law plus Bode's law means that the inner planets, even though they make many more trips around the sun, have proportionately smaller orbital areas for the sun's magnetic flux to fill. In other words, I might modify my original statement and now say that each planet experiences roughly the same induced voltage. That was as far as I got with the experiment. The next stage would require factoring in the size and the conductivities of the planet's ionospheres and also factoring more of what we know about the sun's oscillations. And maybe someone else would like to take all this and experiment further. So thank you for letting me share some of my thoughts and explorations. I know that seeing the solar system as a center core electrical transformer is a huge simplification, but I also know that it is in the right direction. If we are going to understand solar systems, planets, or galaxies, we have to be more flexible, especially with our sense of time. What our eyes and instruments tell us is enormously biased by the speed at which we experience the flow of time. Just because you and I think it takes a long time for Jupiter to go around the sun does not mean that the sun experiences it that way. To the sun, a thousand years of our time passes in the blink of an eye. What to us appears a tiny point moving slowly in a circle will to the sun appear as a continuous shimmering conductive sheath. The solar system actually is an electrical current transformer. It's just that so far, it's much too complicated for us to make sense of. But we will get there. I also want to convey how important it is to look for function. Our universe is quite economical. Very little is wasted. Systems of great complexity are nested within each other. That nesting is never random. Each citizen of the smaller worlds plays very specific roles within the larger world it inhabits. 200 years ago, many scientists thought that cells were unstructured blobs and had no specific purposes. Now we know that every cell type performs many unique and completely necessary functions for the body. In fact, every few months, cellular biologists discover a new type of cell in our body that performs a new previously unknown function. And at present, no scientist would dare say that cells in your body have no purpose. This is a very big change from 1860 in the words of Haeckel. Astrophysics is lagging behind biology in this regard. And if astronomy is going to catch up, we must begin cultivating the idea that different kinds of solar systems have different functions within a galaxy. Thank you. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.